corporations to mom and pop businesses, most have a website. But did you know your website could be a sitting duck for a lawsuit that could cost you tens of thousands of dollars? Business websites, just like the physical locations, are required under the Americans with Disabilities Act to be accessible. And that includes customers who are blind or deaf. Eight on your side investigator Shannon Bankin joins us now. And Keith and I were so interested when we heard you were doing this story because I don't think a lot of businesses even think Never about this yeah. being a possibility. This is something so many businesses haven't heard of. I've been hearing from them all day. But if your website isn't accessible, those who are visually or hearing impaired can't use the site. And some of those people are fighting back. I found disabled activists filing ADA website law Lawsuits by the stack full. Ben Tundas and Donna Dansel own Island Comfort Footwear in Westfield Countryside Mall in Clearwater. And this is my shipping area where I do my web orders. They decided to expand by selling their shoes online. They launched a website and then, bam, a lawsuit. Summons on a Thursday night at uh, 8 o'clock at night in the dark. Got a knock on the door. A blind woman in South Florida claims their website isn't compatible with screen reading software used by the visually impaired, leaving her unable to buy their shoes. It's a $65 a month website. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Was not... there ever any mention on what you need to do to make sure you're ADA compliant? Absolutely not. No mention at all. When most business owners think ADA, they think handicapped parking spots, ramps, and grab bars in restrooms. ADA lawsuits are nothing new. But now, the spotlight is on websites. 2,285 ADA website lawsuits were filed in federal courts in 2018, a yearly increase of a whopping 181 percent. Emily Fuller, the woman who sued the Clearwater Shoe Store, has gone after 175 businesses in the past two years, shown here by all of these lawsuits. First, she went after big names like Sephora, Home Depot, and Chick-fil-A. Now, she has sued a store that sells Tampa Bay Lightning gear inside Emily Arena. Critics call these mass lawsuits a shakedown. The attorneys are telling us, we spoke to many, they're saying you can't fight this. If you fight this, you're going to quadruple your bill. There's nothing you can do, just write them a check. Companies settle because there's no defense to ignoring ADA requirements. Ms. Fuller's attorney tells me his client is an advocate fighting to improve society, and these lawsuits are not going away. I all three colon dollar forty nine point seven two link. To better understand the struggle facing the blind, I sat down with Louise Payton, a Tampa woman who uses a screen reader to do things like shop, suspected seminal white serial killer speaks, read the news, enter email or phone, email or phone edit, and use Facebook. When websites don't have the correct codes to communicate with her software, she's excluded. not a robot checkbox, not check. It has to be really frustrating. You get this far, and you can't get past that one thing. Exactly. Frustrations like that are why Chris Danielson of the National Federation of the Blind tells me businesses need to update their websites. But he believes education and negotiation should come first. Rather than spraying businesses with a fire hose of litigation, a much more thoughtful and uh, transparent approach would be a better form of advocacy. Tun disagrees with that. Now oh, take a few steps with that thing compared to your fanning. He takes this different. lawsuit personally and says he would have helped Ms. Fuller and changed his website if she had just asked. Now we service everyone here as if they're our family. So who's making money on this? Well, the plaintiffs aren't supposed to receive any money because they aren't allowed to sue for damages under the ADA, but the lawyers are collecting attorney's fees that could range from a couple thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars and a lot more if this goes to trial, and that's why so many people settle. But that could crush a small business. I mean, yes. I just it, it begs the question, how do you make sure that your website is compliant and is it a simple fix? It's Sometimes it can be simple, but oftentimes it's not. 
it's a lot easier to do this on the front end when you're launching your website. You need to make sure that your web developer knows how to make your site compatible. There are industry recognized standards and various companies that you can hire to help you with your site. Also, the National Federation of the Blind and the local Lighthouse for the Blind can help. I spoke with both of them and they said they'll do audits and they'll help people for, you know, for free in some cases. Now, the guy at the shoe store said it was costing him $65 a month for his website. Right. But if you add this feature that allows the blind to read, is that a lot more money? Is that it could be depending on how complicated your site is. Um, mm -hmm. A simple site, I talked to folks who do audits, sixteen hundred dollars to audit your site, more money, you know, to make sure that it is compatible. So it can add up. Yeah. But you're also, you know, you're following the law and you're opening up for potential customers that otherwise wouldn't be able to use your True. site. Sure. True. All right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Never would have thought of it. Thank mm -hmm. you.